three years ago on my YouTube channel, I came out with a video titled, I want to become a pro Madden player. Initially met with a lot of people um, kind of questioning why I would even say something like that. Um, because at the time I wasn't very good at Madden. And within six months, I was a professional. I was top 40 in the world. I made money on the live stage. I got to compete on a worldwide broadcasted live event, and I accomplished that goal. And I think when I did that, a lot of people, even to this day, let me know, like, hey, watching you do that kind of showed me in real time, every single day, watching me play, get better, that if you really put your mind to something, you can accomplish it. And today, I am going to be starting on this channel my second kind of challenge like this, and it is my road to becoming a scratch golfer. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump in here quick and explain exactly what that means. Essentially in golf, every single hole is given a par value. If it's a par five, that means that it's supposed to take five shots to get the ball from the tee box all the way into the hole. If you get six, you go plus one. If you get four, you go minus one. At the end of the nine holes, let's say there's 36 total shots, 36 is par you want your score to be the lowest. So a scratch golfer is somebody who on almost every single hole either hits it in, in the allocated number of shots or under that. That is my goal and that's what we're striving for. How this series is gonna work is every single day I am gonna play nine holes until I shoot under par. Now you're not only gonna see me playing the game, you're gonna see me beforehand in kind of vlog style footage of me doing things to get better. You'll see me at the range. You'll hear me talk about stuff that I maybe have read or learned and then you'll be able to actually see me go out to the course and hopefully get better every single day. So why I think this is even possible um, is I've always been pretty naturally athletic. I was a two-time top male athlete um, when I was in high school and middle school. I was recruited to play quarterback in college um, and I tend to pick up on things quite quickly when it comes to sports. I have a good frame for golf. I'm six foot four, I'm 197 pounds. Um, I do work out every single day or five days a week. I can't say every single day and I can hit the ball a pretty long way. Also, I have time to kind of focus on it. I do YouTube full time. Um, so I have time in the day to kind of go out, learn, spend time at the range. And I honestly just believe I can do it. So guys, this is the beginning of a journey. Um, and I hope you guys stay with me on it. And yeah, let's, without further ado, let's, let's just begin. You guys saw the intro. Guys, I want to be a scratch golfer. I want to be compete in some of the local pro tournaments and I want to do it. And I understand even saying this is incredibly vulnerable. You know, there's something and I feel like a lot of people in life will never really go after their dreams because it's when you say you want to be really good at something, you're setting yourself up for people to judge you, for people to watch you fail. And I think so many times people will never actually chase after the things they want to do because to even verbalize that they want to do it, there's fear in that. Like, I'm a little bit scared because I could fail, but the way I'm seeing this right now is I'm not going to fail. I've never looked at anything in my life as, like I remember when I started YouTube, there was always stats that were like, you have a one in however many thousand chance of becoming a successful YouTuber. And I remember telling people, oh, well, I'm the one. Like, I'm like, those people aren't gonna outwork me. Like, I'm going to do more than they do. Like, I think sometimes you can see those stats and get scared, but you gotta understand those stats have, there is a one. And that one easily could be you. And I hope one thing that we can, you guys see from this journey, it's gonna be on the second channel. So every single day on the second channel, go check it out. One thing that I hope you guys see from this journey is that if I do succeed, and even if I don't, you're gonna see the triumphs and you're gonna see the failures. And hopefully it shows you that if there's something that you want in life, that you guys, that it's doable, you know? It's not gonna happen in a day, but perseverance and just the ability to just not quit will get you so much farther than any of you will ever realize. So my goal is that we go through this series and at the end of it, we kind of look at it and say, oh wow, Brett did it, that would obviously be awesome. And then whatever dreams or things that you guys wanna do, you can more confidently go after because you saw me do it. So guys, without further ado, this is episode one. Um, how it's gonna work is we're gonna do potentially some range stuff in the second, but as far as today, I'm just going to the course. We're gonna go shoot, um, see how I do, get a starting point, and just go from there. Thank you guys so much. Like I said, first video is here. Once you're done, click on the link for the second video, and yeah, enjoy. Okay, so beginning of the series is the first hole, dead straight. Um, it's probably the easiest hole on the course, it's 327. Um, one of my best clubs is my four iron, so 
I'm just gonna play this really, really safe, try and hit in the middle of the fairway and hopefully have a nice, um, easy chip on. Okay, so that could not have went any better. We're probably like, it's a back pin, but we're probably like 80 yards out. The four iron is probably my favorite club. So we got a 58 degree. This is where you gain all the strokes. So I gotta put this nice, um, nice and easy onto the green. Ideally, we're gonna be right at. Oh. Uh, it didn't feel great. I think I was a little worried to hit that too far, but we're actually a putt. For birdie it's the easiest hole in the course so but we got a putt for birdie a little bit left right putting probably the point of my game that you're going to notice is going to need the most work but hopefully i think it's a little left to right i'd love to knock this in just to start off the series oh my gosh oh my gosh <laughs> you can't you can't make this stuff up a lot of people are going to say Brett, you did, no, I promise you, I'd never make putts like that. You might never see another putt like that, but first hole of the whole entire series, we're minus one. Couldn't be happier. Okay, so this is a par five. It's it's around a corner. So you go around this um, this massive clump of trees that you can see here. There's a couple ways you can play it over, but if you hit a perfect drive, it'll probably carry like, you can get over it with like 280, but I'm gonna try and play it safe with just a five wood kind of trying to cut the angle but that way I know if I hit it good I'm not going to go too far into the end so I'm kind of playing it safe kind of playing this par five um, ideally with three shots I actually really think that's going to be nice yeah that that kind of um, that hooked exactly like how I wanted it to I think I made it around the corner um, Felt pretty good off the club. I think we could potentially be able to attack the green in two here, but as far as a five wood, I think I'm happy with that shot. It went bad. That's why I use a five wood here because I've had drives that I thought were perfect and I've ended up in that. So here, if you hit a good drive, we're right on the fairway. Um, I have 260 in. I'm gonna use a four iron. If I don't, it's a back pin. So I'm kind of just trying to be like in that 60 range. Um, but even if I'm 100, it's okay. I just wanna make sure Hit it true and hit it straight. Oh, I like it. Honestly, that's not, we're not on the fairway, but we're just on the right, kind of in front of the sand. Kind of exactly what I'm looking to do. If I'm shooting for score here, um, I can, if I can get up and down, I can get another birdie. So pretty clean off the club, happy. Honestly, from that spot, it's not terrible, but hopefully, <laughs> these are the most stressful putts in golf right here. Woo, okay, okay, through two, we're minus one, which is a great start to the video. Like I said, this is, uh, we're playing pretty well. Okay, so this next hole is a par four. It's like three, it's 387, but I know it's a little skinny. I'm playing good so far, so I'm actually gonna take the same club, the four iron, and um, it's like my 220 club, 225. So if I hit my four iron good, I'll be I'll be in good shape, and it's my most consistent club. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, the four iron is easily my most consistent club. So a lot of our fours rather than going for the green I'll just attack with this knowing right now I'm dead set, dead well middle of the fairway probably 140 so let's try and get it close okay so we're one I gotta get a range but one about 50 now with the way this hole is if I'm long I'm gonna be on top of a hill and you never want to chip down a hill I pretty much would be if I'm short I have a nice easy simple chip up we have a front pin so I'm gonna hit a pitching wedge um, which is kind of the safe bet. If I'm short, it's all right. Oh, I pushed it. It's coming, no. Dang, okay, dang, okay. 
<sighs> Definitely not ideal I'm in the sand. I just, I can feel I didn't get the club. <sighs> okay, we're gonna have a sand shot, but I trust, I believe. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get it up. Yeah, I've been working on my sand shots so much. That's why I was so pumped. Just to see like, I spent like two hours at the range one time and that, that couldn't have been more perfect. Okay, we got a par putt. Okay, I'm seeing this pretty much dead straight. Maybe a little to the left, but relatively straight. Oh, oh. Okay. Bogey, we're uh, we're back to even. Can't be too mad about that. That's just you gotta be able to make putts like that. And we got the toughest hole in the course coming up, so gotta tighten up my hat. We gotta. This is gonna be hard. Okay, so this hole, it literally is all around water. You're like, if I go too far, I'm in the water. If I go too far to the right, I'm in the water. Um, essentially, the only way to play this hole is to take an iron and try and hit it about two ten. Give yourself a second shot, but it's tight, right? Like, you can see there's not a ton of room for air here. So if I can get this safe, I'll be very happy. Oh, that's dead straight. I'm worried I'm too far. Nope. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm playing uh, I'm playing really good. That was dead straight, like 205. I got a good second shot. Okay, so if you can see water, water. My idea is to take a seven iron and just try and go a bit above that path, or even just play this like 100 yards, 120 yards to give myself. I just do not want to go in the water. Okay, I gotta see what I'm out. I'm 90 from here, probably about 90 yards. Ooh, back pin. I'm gonna go like an 80% 54. I thought this went further actually. It came over this red stake, but sometimes things are deceptive. Um, yeah, if I can put this close and even par this hole, I would be absolutely elated. Oh, I like it a lot. I like it a lot, Justin. <laughs> okay, love that, man. 54 degree. 80%, just a nice little kiss on the grass, and we got another birdie putt. So downhill, which is not ideal, but honestly, in terms of like where to go, I think I can just kind of aim a little to the right. I never have a ball marker, which is bad, but you gotta know, I'm just gonna push it back. I try and line up with that. can't sit here and be mad about that. That was the hardest hole on the course. We got a par and we actually, I gave myself a good birdie look. So I think the next holes are actually a little bit easier, which is sometimes scary if I even, I don't even want to say that, but we got a par three next, let's put it close. Okay, so par three, back pin, like 160. We're gonna go 50 degree. Um, just don't hit the water. Make sure, Brett, you swing hard enough. The water can really mess with us. So don't look at the water. Don't think about the water. Just hit it over the water. Oh, go, 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 go. It's gonna, it could be decisive, but I actually think that was a pretty sick shot. I'm not gonna lie. But it could be decisive. It's a back pin, so I'm guessing I have like 15 feet for birdie, but dead straight. Okay. Fixing my divot. It's crazy. I don't know what the rule is. Like, I think on the green you can pick up your ball. Like, I have a ton of grass here. So I'm gonna get rid of that grass. Um, as I feared, we're probably further than I would have liked to be away because like I said, back pins on par threes are so deceptive sometimes where you can think you're laughing, but you're really not. But I'm reading this right to left, right to left. Yeah, that's, honestly, on par threes, 
you take that, even though that didn't go in, I should be able to tap this in. Oh, I, oh I'm, not, I'm not counting that, don't be weird. Um, but yeah, as long as you're within that on a par three, you can't, can't be too mad. Still, I actually think we're even. Um, so let's keep this going. Guess the club, four iron, uh, 360 par four, um, but with a really awkward look. So here, when you look here, you're gonna see, you got these trees, so you're limited. If I, if I try and hit a drive here, I could go right into these trees. I'm gonna try and draw a four iron. So essentially try and push the four iron from right to left, bend the corner a little bit, and leave myself a really good second shot. It's been, it's been consistent so far. So hopefully we can keep buzzing with our four iron and uh, and kind of bend these trees a little bit. Oh! I did I did what I wanted to do, but I cut it super thin. I am terrified that we could be in the water, but it's also open on the other side of these trees. I definitely cut it. I did, it had a draw on it, but not necessarily the draw that I wanted. So, mm, could be messy. We might be in the water here. I don't know. I honestly think, guys, that it's in here or in there. I we've traced, we've looked, we've looked a lot, or it's in the water. I honestly think what my cut line was would have been right in this little like water thing. So, don't know how that works, but I think, I'm guessing in this tree, I, like I said, I'm relatively new to go. I'll try and figure it out after, but I'm gonna drop from just outside of these trees um, and shoot over these trees. Unfortunate break, but we'll bounce back. Okay, so this is a totally blind shot. Like we're looking over these trees. Um, we're hitting three, so I can kind of see where the pin is, but I'm just, oh. Not an ideal situation. It's over. Oh my god. I think I'm in the sand. I no joke think I'm in the sand. The green sloping this way, I want to aim right. Give it, but I'm off like this is a mean slope out of here. I gotta give it a little bit. I need this putt. So bad. Go, oh, I gotta attack that more, man. You're shooting for six. I think, honestly, I think that was an eight. That's, oh my gosh. That's what separates it though. That's one bad hole. Not gonna let it get to me too much. I, I wanna throw something, but I'm not gonna throw something. I'm just gonna try and par a birdie these last three and uh, make it a good round. Okay, so par four, we're bringing out the driver. This is one that I like to go for the drive. After a bad hole, there's two, I have two options. I can just pout or I can just go crush this thing like 300 yards and I choose 300 yards. Let's get our swag back. Oh yeah. Okay, like I said, in life, it's not always, it's about how you bounce back. Perfect drive, dead straight on a very tight fairway. I didn't hit it necessarily completely perfect, but it's a long way up there. We're gonna birdie this. Gonna make up some of those strokes. Weapon of choice, 50. Same club as last time. We're like 100 out. So, and it's an open green, like you can't miss that green. Sometimes I wish, oh, and that's my next purchase. I need one of those 
thing. This that was not a 54 club. Ugh. Stupid, stupid, stupid. So a nice 90 foot putt for birdie. I'm just mad because if I hit my 58, if I, if I hit my 58, I think I would have been in a lot better shape. But it's honestly just trying not to three putt bogey after a good drive and being over the green. So I'm putting this because chipping would do nothing for me at least. I left it. Oh my gosh, it's gonna hit at the house. Oh. That's like the famous last words, is don't leave it short because that means you're gonna crush it. Just crush it. This is a nice, easy, simple, you know, just uphill, cross, easy putt, right? Oh my gosh, thank God. So I did exactly what I didn't want to do. I three putt bogeyed by hitting it too far, but that to me isn't necessarily a skill issue. It's just not knowing, oh, that was only like 110 yards. Don't hit your full 50. You're going to be 40, 400 feet from the pin. So it's all right. Okay. So because I'm just smart, I went to the range and I hit my nine iron and then I left my nine in the truck. I normally would hit a nine here, but because I left it somewhere, I don't have a nine. So we're hitting a pitching wedge. It's a hundred and, oh, some, what is it? It's like a hundred and fifty. So back pin, I gotta, I gotta swing. I like it a lot. I think it might be short, but I love it. Oh, okay. Just on the edge of the green, honestly, I'm not mad, see if I had my nine, if I didn't leave my nine, if I wasn't irresponsible, we might be laughing right now, but we got to putt for birdie. Two decisions here. I'm a little off the front. I can definitely putt this. Um, I'd have to, it's thick grass, or I try and run like a 50. My gut tells me to putt this. I don't think I can do better with this club given the distance. Oh, or maybe I could, honestly, I'm going to, Scared money doesn't make money. We're gonna chip this. Oh my God. <sighs> ah, see, but that's good. I, that takes a lot of confidence. Old Brett, well, Brett just in general, is putting this. Chip it, I work on my chipping. Now we gotta putt for par. Okay. I like that. Felt my fundamentals were just whack on that job, but still got a par back um, after a quadruple and a bogey. It's nice to get another par. Final hole. This is a par four. It's I find this one forgiving on pretty much both sides. So on the right, if I hit it to the right, I'll end up close to like the first tee box. If I hit it straight, I'm good. But honestly, my favorite place to be is on top of this hill or just over that hill. If I can hit it over those trees we are gonna be like in really 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 good shape so something smooth something over the trees so we went over the trees but to the right now like i said on this particular hole that actually gives you a very good shot in and i know that because i've played it I'll probably be like 120 out downhill. So good shot. Okay, so I'm over here. I'm actually gonna get Justin to record. This, this won't be a good angle, but I am gonna be hitting a 50 down the hill. Hopefully, he's gonna be by the green. Hopefully it's on the green. Oh my gosh, stop. Oh, thank goodness. Horrible. Oh, okay, so double bogey to end. I hated that hole. I did horrible on that hole. Um, as far as a recap for this, 
I would say I let two holes really ruin this game. And if you want to get better, you can't. I just got to sharpen it up. I can't. Once things were going bad, I was letting it get really bad, and I needed to just focus in, lock in more. But overall, can't be too bad. I don't know what I finished, um, but you guys will see it on the screen. So come over to the Brett Barrett channel for episode two. Make sure to do that. Um, go click the link below. There's already going to be episode two out. So come follow the journey.